Well, Spencer, let me start with LSU because that, that has now mm -hmm. become a, a big topic of conversation. It, it, what do you know about this Lincoln Riley almost going there, done deal, all that stuff? What happened and, and where are they now? It, yeah, they say, <laughs> let Richard they say, go here first. They say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. Uh, Paul, I think whether Lincoln Riley was going to be LSU's next head coach is also in the eye of the beholder. I mean, from anybody you, you, you ask, it either was close to a done deal Saturday night before Bedlam kicked off. There are some other people that would tell you that that was a fabrication and that LSU was not actually telling people that Lincoln Riley was going to be their next head coach. Then, obviously, Lincoln Riley says very astutely mm -hmm. that he will not be LSU's head coach after the game. And all you know what breaks loose, because nobody, and I mean nobody, on LSU's end was expecting him to do that or say that from what I understand. Yeah. And then Sunday afternoon, all you know what continues to break loose when Lincoln Riley true to his word, does not become the next head coach of LSU. Yeah, two things here. There's always a chain reaction, okay? Whenever one coach is hired, one coach opening pops up. So somebody has to get hired for that. Well, they've got to go get somebody else. For instance, I know right now, everyone at Oklahoma completely irate over the possibility that, yes, Lincoln Riley kind of played them, okay? Free market, perfectly within his rights to do that, in my opinion. However, however, keep that energy for when Oklahoma goes out <laughs> yes. and does the yes. same thing. Yes. They're going to go out and do the same thing to somebody else, okay? So let's not get too irate in one direction or another. Keep a level head because, as the screenwriter William Goldman once said, nobody knows anything. And at the end of the day, if the head coach of Oklahoma, there's only probably one other program that has been as consistently mm -hmm. successful without fail over the last 50 years. It's Ohio State. Oklahoma, if the head coach of Oklahoma can leave yep. to go anywhere else, anyone can go. Any other coach is up for grabs. Anybody can get it this coaching cycle. So, <laughs> uh, do you buy uh, this story on Brian Kelly, or is it a, another, you know, his agent who seems to be rather busy? He also represents Lincoln, he represents other key players here who's just sending out smoke signals to try to do do for Brian Kelly what Mel Tucker and James Franklin were able to benefit from. I just I, I mean I just watched Lincoln Riley walk away from one of the most stable and prestigious jobs in the profession. I'll believe anything at this point. I also would not dismiss out of hand that LSU kicked tires. I'm not going to mm -hmm. speak to Brian Kelly's interest or disinterest in the job, but at this point who hasn't LSU contacted or who won't LSU contact? At this point in time, you are done and dusted through your, you know, top line list of guys. You are in full, I don't want to say damage control or panic yeah, mode. Yeah. That, that's not really what it is. But it's, you got to swing a wide net because you're now sort of researching. I don't mean researching. I mean going back through the motions of something that more or less probably should have been done mm -hmm. before this. Because, look... Florida got it done in six days? Fair around that, yeah. I also, remember this, too. It's not necessarily about getting a job. Sometimes what you are trying to do in these things is, in your current position, get leverage to get something you want. This is a big thing in coaching season. Is somebody who floats something in order to go back to their employer and say, hey, we probably need a little more money for this. Hey, I would like this particular assistant or this particular allowance. You know, this is, by the way, just, I'm saying apropos of nothing, that Mark Stoops and Mitch Barnhart at Kentucky had a very pleasant sit-down about things that the program needed to happen this week. Uh, Mark Stoops' name, though not particularly like it specifically attached to any job, he's an attractive candidate. So naturally, this is the time to go back and get those things, to discuss with schools and say, how can we improve our already strong relationship and make it a little bit better. There's no implied threat of leaving, but it's always right there in terms of scarcity, availability, and the distinct possibility that maybe, just maybe, it could be 1% better somewhere else. And the, you look at what happened with James Franklin, right? James Franklin got a 10-year contract extension. Whatever. Penn yeah. State gets to put out that they have him locked up for 10 years. And then you look, you look in the details. You read between the lines on the buyout and how that buyout drops and then drops and then drops again in the next two years, two or three years. That's correct. So it becomes a situation where you can sort of have the best of both worlds if you're a coach who would still like to be mobile in the future, 
the school gets to say, we got him locked up for 10 years. And then the contract says mm -hmm. a little bit different hey. for a prospective future employer in the next couple years. The real winner in all this, by the way, billable hours, baby. Billable hours. Undefeated. Undefeated. Well, one, one, he just finished the season 10 and 2. Yep. I'm, saying, I'm speaking of Lane Kiffin. Why is the Lane train not being mentioned for any of these jobs? Lane is interesting because Lane is going to bring attention. Correct. And even more attention on just Lane specifically. And do you want to deal with that or do you not? I think mm -hmm. Ole Miss is fine and dandy with it. They obviously are. Uh, and it's been a great season. But as far as Lane on the field, it's been a really good 10-2 and two season. But I think if I was an athletic director, I would like to see this again from Lane. I would like to see Correct. how success continues, not is it going to be a quick flame out here. Yeah. Additionally, there's this. Occasionally, sometimes people, I know, I know, they might see a bigger number on a paycheck. They might see something else over the fence. Sometimes people stay. Sometimes people are all too happy to stay in their situation because it simply doesn't feel right. I know, it's a little naive and romantic, but it does happen. I asked you about Lane Kiffin. <laughs> I guess you must have missed the question. <laughs> <laughs> what, Lane's not a romantic? Come on. <laughs> hey, guys, we will be watching tonight. Thanks so much. Great to see both of you. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.